Opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. And uh, welcome to Moose Jaw This Week, and I'm Al Johnson, your host, and today we're up in the David V. Curry VC Armories at the top of Main Street, and I have with me the curator of the, the historical uh, artifacts here, uh, Captain Retired Ron Hammond. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thank you, Lyle. Now, Ron is uh, uh, part of a big thing that's happening here in Moose Jaw on the weekends of the 3rd and 4th of May and the 11th of May. Big deals. And so I thought we'd maybe do two segments in, in the next in the coming month to talk about what's going to be happening here. And Ron is working and I'm helping too uh, with a um, an open house on the 3rd for the high school students of our community and also on the 4th of May when it's open for the entire community to come up here from 1 till 4 in the afternoon. So. Ron, let's just talk about the history of this building. It's a, it's a 100th anniversary. It was started to be built in 1912, obviously. What can I, you can fill me in uh, further about that? Well, it was started, in, the forms were, or the plans were actually made in 1912, and the building was started in 1912, finished in 1913. Fast build. A fast build. And on budget? Uh, that I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I would imagine so. Yeah. But, and one thing I noticed in some of the pictures up here, it was a wooden floor originally. That's right, because it was made for infantry, and infantry paraded on wooden floors. It, the cement come in when the regiment went to tanks. Oh, Cause, yeah, because they do infantry does a lot more marching than the armored corps. That's right. And the wood is the best for your feet. Okay. Now, this building was built just before the war. Now, was there any consideration of why that happened, or was it just the fact that that happened in Mushtaz history at that time? I think it happened because of Moose Jaw's history at that time. The land that it was built on was donated by the city of Moose Jaw uh, after some bickering back and forth. Uh, there's also a sister armory to this one built up in Prince Albert, which is identical to it. Yeah, that's true, because you, you go to different places in Canada where there are armories, and you can tell the time that they're built because they're very similar in their the structures that they, they come with. That's right, yeah, that is, that's true. Save architects. Yeah. yeah. So, Ron, they built this armory in 1913, it was opened, and then 1914, the war came. That's right. And at that time, the regiments were changing around in Saskatchewan. So this actually became the center for recruiting in Saskatchewan at that time. Also, it was, it was a pretty, it's been, over the years, a hubbub and a center of activity for various things. And that was probably the first thing that uh, made it uh, a center uh, in the military for Moose Jaw. Yeah, that, that's right. And during the uh, war years, this, this building here housed up to 300 people. Really? Yeah. Where did they stay? On the main floor here. Okay. And they were marched downtown for their baths at the YMCA. Amazing, eh? Yeah. And they fed them here too? Yes. They uh, brought the first cooking was done outside in granaries. They brought granaries in and the, that's where they cooked the meals and then they served them inside the building. Wow, and of course there's offices in here and back at the time back in the early part of the thing it was all heated by wood and by coal yeah it was all heated by coal there was a furnace in each end of the building and there was a resident caretaker who looked after the the fuel in the furnaces and that's why he his he his accommodations were up over here that's right he did stay up here and uh, one thing about this armory is in 1936 the north end of it burnt really and it's brick. It, well the inside burned, eh? Yeah. And it was rebuilt that same year. And so, yeah, and so they, a lot of things have happened here. There's messes in here that have a lot of uh, interesting things and, and memorabilia. So let's just talk 
generally about what's going to happen on the 3rd of May, which is the day that the high school students are going to be able to come. As the grade 11 classes from the community are being invited because that's the year in school that they learn about the wars. Yes, we'll take them on tours of the uh, showcases down here. In behind we have showcases. Upstairs at both ends we have memorabilia, so we'll take them all through a tour of the whole building. Yeah. And outside. And outside to our vehicle park. Which is, you know, that was Daryl Bazin's big uh, contribution when he was here. He did a lot of finagling. Well, you could, you could call it that, yeah. Yeah, he did an excellent job. And then this last year, his, him and his rangers come back here and refurbished everything, which we are very grateful for. That's right, they were here in the fall and they, they repainted it, uh, reinstalled uh, glass and uh, any of the, you know, things like that. It was, uh, it was pretty well rejuvenated out there. So it's nice to have it ready for the for the uh, viewing of the 100th anniversary. Yes, it's very nice. Yeah. Uh, Daryl is now head of the, he's the captain and head of the Rangers for Western Canada. So he had his Rangers here and they're from all over in Northwest, Western Saskatchewan and Alberta. Okay, well that's good. Now, Ron, we've got four display cabinets. Uh, let's just tell me, uh, we'll just pan around what they are. The first one, let's start at the, the one that's right behind us because that's the oldest. Tell me about that. That was put here by the veterans of the 46th Battalion when they came back from overseas. And it, and it contains uh, interesting kind of, there's uh, some medals in there, there's some uh, souvenirs that they gathered, uh, some pictures of people. Yeah, that, <clears throat> pardon me, that's right, there's a, a captured German machine gun in there. There was, uh, the 46th Battalion had a drum and bugle band, they also had a pipe band, and there's a picture in there of their pipe band and a couple of the drums that they used. Uh, some of the sports memorabilia that they won over there. That's quite interesting. They had a track and field meet during the war, and we won. That's right, we, they did. Yeah. It's, it's quite, and if people will come and they look at it, they go, really? They go, yeah, it was a way of, between uh, when they were out of the line, they would do some rest and re, uh, rehabilitation, they would do some sporting events. Now, also you've got, uh, on this end, is uh, the King's Own Rifles of Canada. Yes, King's Own Rifles of Canada were very active during the Second World War. Uh, one battalion was stationed here as reserve. <clears throat> the other battalion went to the West Coast and the Aleutians. Okay. okay. And so this is memorabilia from them. Yeah, and there's, you know, again, there's all the weapons are inert and things like that, all the ammunition is Most inert. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then there is the 77th Battery, which is, battery, which is the active unit from Moose Jaw in the Second World War. Yes, there was quite a few men from Moose Jaw in there, <clears throat> notably the Inglebys. Yes. There's quite a few Inglebys in there. Yeah. In fact, one of them went to be the Sergeant Major of the unit. So this is their memorabilia that they have sent over there. Yeah. And the final one is uh, the Saskatchewan Dragoons, <clears throat> who were the current residents of the, of the armories. Yes, that's right. Uh, the current one down there <clears throat> is done up by the soldiers. They wanted it to to represent what the soldiers do today. And you'll notice there's UN flags in there. There's some memorabilia from Afghanistan. This is actually what the soldiers are doing. Well, that's pretty good. And of course, there's some, uh, these, the two uh, crosses that are in here for the Vimy crosses are a very important part of our heritage for Moose Jaw. Yes, the Vimy crosses were made over on, uh, when placed on Vimy Ridge by the soldiers, by a pioneer battalion. And the wood from them come from an old chateau over there. After the war, the permanent markers were put up, and these were brought over and put in St. John's Church for safekeeping. When the past, the new minister come into St. John's Church, he wanted to get rid of it, so now they've been repatriated back to the armories, which we are very happy at. Yeah, for sure. And of course, the wood in that, I happen to know a bit about, the wood in that chateau was like 800 years old, and uh, it was bombed and destroyed, and so they took, uh, being the kind of people who were in the military at that time, in the army and from Musha were tradesmen and craftsmen and they created these uh, with their skills from the wood that they found in this uh, chateau. But there's many stories in here. There's stories about Victoria Cross winners. Now, I was doing a little bit of research about this and there's 96 Victoria Crosses that have been awarded in Canada since the Boer War, or not since the Boer War, since the Crimean War in 1859. Four of them are to people with Moose Jaw connections. That's right. Four of them did come from Moose Jaw. In fact, the most notorious one that we have here is David Curry. 
which the Armies is now named after. Yeah. And of course, he was a soldier in the Second World War, uh, a tanker. Yes, yes, he was. He's with the uh, Southern Alberta Light Horse. And uh, we have the honor of having his uniform upstairs that yeah. his wife gave us for safekeeping. Yeah. And so there are display cabinets all over here. And that's mostly been what, what the last, what, 10 years of your life has been spent in here doing that kind of thing? Pretty well, yeah, yeah. pretty well the last 10 years. And there's, uh, there's displays of different uniforms from different eras. There's a World War I uniform and a post-war uniform. All different kinds of things that people would find interesting. And the tours are going to be for uh, students on Thursday, May the 3rd. They'll start in the morning and they'll go most of the day. But on May the 4th, the Saturday, from 1 to 4, it's open to the public and you'll learn more and you'll be guiding people through and there'll be tours organized so people can learn about the history of this place and the people who, who have habitated over the years. Yes, we'll have uh, guides up here to take different groups through the different areas, including the messes upstairs to show yeah. them some of the memorabilia up there. Yeah, because there's up in the uh, the junior rank or senior ranks mess here. There's the only th vestige of, of, uh, of military or military in history of the staff uh, tops for the flagpoles that uh, belonged to the 46th Battalion, which were the flags were put down in St. Andrew's Church and it burned down. The only thing that was saved was those crowns from there. Yes, we're very pleased to have them. So, Ron. Uh, it's probably going to take about, I'd say, three-quarters of an hour to do a walk around here. Yeah, I would say about three-quarters of an hour to take you all through. But we want people, we want to invite people. There's no charge, and the tour guides are going to be uh, members of the military or ex-members of the military who have connections here with the armories as uh, serving members with the Saskatchewan Dagoons. So there's the field park out, out front all the different things, the displays inside here, and a little bit of history about the people who went through the doors of this building in the past 100 years. Ron, thanks for taking time to be with us today. Thank you very much for having me here. And uh, hope people can, uh, can join in that. And later on, we're going to do a segment about the events that are going to take place on May the 11th. And I know you'll want to tune in for that too, because it's quite a spectacle that they're, try that they're organizing for it. So. Thanks, uh, and we'll be coming back with another segment that has a segue to Ron Hammond. We'll find out about that when we come back. Don't go away. Mm -hmm.